This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk with Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young on ESPN Radio 94.1. Back here on 757 Saturday Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1, powered by Larry King Law. If you're injured in an accident, you call 757 INJURED for Larry King with the coach Ed Young. I am Matt Hatfield, and Ed, we're privileged to be joined by a special guest. He's one of the best around when it comes to basketball coaching, longtime girls basketball coach in Hampton Roads. You remember him from his days at Salem High, hoisting the trophy, first colonial as well, Tallwood Catholic High, which used to be known as Bishop Sullivan there in Virginia Beach. And he's got, if not a thousand wins, he's right there close to it. And when we combine you and him, we're looking at 1,500 plus ones, I think it is. Coach Larry Bowman with us here. So kind of join us on ESPN Radio 94.1. And congrats to your LA Dodgers. Are you partying like it's 1988? I'm telling you, it was a great week. Uh, so glad to see uh, Clayton Kershaw get that ring because uh, I have a lot of respect for that guy, and I, he, he deserves it. He really does, and uh, he's been you know ridiculed for his postseason uh, career, but he's certainly a Hall of Famer, one of the best to do it down the mound in a long time. And good to see a local kid in Chris Taylor out of Cox High School in Virginia Beach. It's part of our poll question we'll have up later in the show, Larry. But, um, I mean, every year we're seeing athletes from here in the 757 when we're talking about baseball, softball, men's and women's basketball, uh, football. I mean, we're watching every Sunday and Saturday these guys dazzle on the gridiron. You put on uh, you know, women's basketball, Elizabeth Williams, an all-WNBA defensive player. And in baseball, we're watching a couple of locals like Lau and Taylor go at it. Yeah, it's great. It's great to see uh, the seven five seven athletes getting uh, getting that national recognition. We've got some great ones here, and uh, uh, it's good to see them getting the exposure they deserve. Good morning, Larry. How how you feeling out there? I'm I'm great, Ed. Uh, I'm I'm great to see that it looks like we might have a basketball season, and uh, you know the Dodgers won the World Series, and uh, what could, what could be better? Yankees winning. <laughs> I mean, you asked me what could be better. I'm going to be honest with you. Yankees win it. We weren't even in there, so Dodger I can't say I much. For Dodger Yankee World Series, but uh, that didn't quite work out that way. I still think the Yankees were a pretty good team, but uh, I don't know. The, well, the Rays had their number. Um, it's just the yeah, way it, it is. Did. It just had their number. It was, it was good baseball. The key, good thing was we got it in. Uh, we saw some decent base, some different things than what we're normal to see. But again, we're not in a normal situation anymore. Um, it was interesting. I, one thing I got to ask you, top of my head, I know you're a longtime Dodger fan, of course. I'm a longtime Yankee fan. Mickey Mantle's my guy. Who is a guy or two for you for the Dodgers? Well, I hate to show my age, but really, my guy growing up was Duke Snyder. Okay. I was just a big Duke Snyder fan. Uh, and but I wore 14 in, in little league and junior high and high school. So Gil Hodges too was uh, was another one. Uh, but really, the Duke was my guy. My grandfather took me to Ebbets Field in uh, 1955, and we saw them play the Braves, and it was something that, you know, I barely remember, but what I always remember, you know, you're in Brooklyn, it's all concrete, there's no grass, and walking up the ramp into Ebbets Field and seeing that green grass, I will never forget that. It was amazing. You know, you mentioned you know, some of the all-time greats like a Duke Snyder, and, and back in the day that a lot of times him and Mantle – um, coming up around on that same time, I think Snyder was a little bit older, but compared a lot to each other because uh, in baseball back in the day, it was Dodgers, Yankees for the most part. Even before big money came into play, it was those were the two franchises that people th- thought would hook up most of the time in the World Series, and both have produced a ton of Hall of Famers. Oh, absolutely. Back then, it was those three center fielders in New York, uh, Snyder, Mantle, and Willie Mays. And Willie Mays was probably the best of them all, actually. I hate to say that, but it probably was. Yeah, I would no doubt. The, the, maybe the original five-tool guy, um, of what he could do yeah. and what he could play. So, But all of them, of course, had made their mark. And you mentioned a guy like a Gil Hodges that a lot of people forget about. Most people might remember more as a manager and forget that he was a player. That's right. Managed the Mets to the championship, I guess. And died young, too. That's a shame. Yeah, had really a heart does. attack, I think, right after that, maybe. Yeah, very young and in his age when he passed for sure. Before we get to some basketball matters with you, Coach, and we're talking with Larry Bowman, one of the all-time greats here, Catholic High in Virginia Beach here on 757 Saturday Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. And, Ed, you can follow up with this as well. From a coaching perspective, I mean, you take away from the fan perspective, which I'm sure you were giddy, 
I imagine you've been in not as serious limelight. Everybody's watching across the country, but you've had to make decisions that are tough. Do I leave this player in? Do I take this player in? And you know where I'm going with this from the baseball standpoint about Kevin Cash's decision to yank Snell in the game as dominant as he was. From a fan perspective, I imagine you loved it. From a coach perspective, I know it's different than the sport of basketball, which is yours there that you are the expert on. Uh, Give me your your thought on it, and I guess everybody's been uh, very, very critical of the decision here in the last few days. Well, from a fan's perspective, I thought it was the greatest decision of all time. But, you know, from a, from a coach's side, it, it was horrible. It, it just doesn't make sense that they – he had no feel for what Snell was doing. And, and I didn't think Snell gave him much of an argument either. You know, I mean, if that would have been, uh, I don't know, Bob Gibson or, uh, you know, Tom Seaver or somebody like that, They'd have told him to go back to the dugout that he was still. I'm still going to pitch, you know. But uh, I guess guys today are just room for five innings, and that's it. So, but I, I thought it was a horrible decision. Uh, uh, but glad that he made it. Well, and I think I think Larry put out on Facebook when it happened. Great move, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Larry put put that out there. <laughs> I think I put something like he just took. Sandy Koufax, out of, I mean, Blake Snell out of the game. <laughs> yeah, and, and you're right. And when you mentioned about – go, go ahead. He was pitching like Sandy Koufax that night. And, I mean, how do you take him out? I just – I don't know. It just doesn't make sense, especially since he'd struck out those next three batters six times in six at-bats. Well, Ed, I guess the closest thing, and Larry, you can chime in as well here, to that from a basketball standpoint would be like at the end of the game, if you're down one and you get the rebound with 10 seconds to go, do you let it go on the fast break or do you call timeout and drop a play? Ed, what do you think, and Larry, you can follow up as well. What, what do you do in that spot? Is that like the closest Tra- thing to what Cash had to do there? Or? Traditionally, I've I've gone with the flow. I don't know if that, that's a good comparison. Okay. I think, I think a better comparison is you have a kid that's made um, – couple threes in a row he's hot the crowd's going crazy and then you take him out Mm -hmm. people are like he's taking out the best player and it might be a kid and this has happened to me many 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 times Uh, and and one of the things in coaching you better be good at is knowing a player's expiration date i gave a clinic on this one time you know uh, milk cartons they have expiration dates you have to know your kid's expiration you put a kid in the game and okay he hits a couple three threes in a row but you know all year long he has showed you why he is a coming off the bench type player he can't sustain. So I've, I've taken kids out. And people say, wow, it's crazy. But if you go back and look, most of the time, not all, I made a lot, probably more dumb mistakes than good ones, is the fact that that kid would did make a couple mistakes, missed the next couple, airballed a couple, got too high of himself or whatever. So that would be a better better uh, comparison, I think. Larry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's a much better comparison. And, and I've, I mean, I've had it happen before where a kid who's not a great shooter knocks down a couple of threes and and I've actually turned to my assistant coach I said we're in trouble now because now they're, they're going to think they can make every shot in the world Absolutely. they're going to keep cheating and <laughs> you know our better players are not going to get the opportunity but uh yeah that's 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 a good comparison as far as the end of the game you know I think it just depends on, on the situation and the flow of the game and most of the time I like to just let them go but sometimes you, you know you've got a real nice sideline play you might want to call a timeout set it up and see if it works so i i think too larry to, to piggyback on what you're saying I'm, I'm kind of the same way too limited time things get a little crazy defenses do a little some crazy things if the ball's in the right person's hand and you're pretty sure he's not going to give it up calling a timeout means you gave it out of your your best player's hands because that's who you're trying to get now maybe if your best player is sitting next to you you call the timeout to get him in the game and now you hope you get him because you want to try to go down if you're going down you want to go down with your best player Absolutely. Uh, win or lose, you want to try to do it with the, the one you want, the, the person to have the ball with their, in their hands. Uh, so that's true. I agree with that 100%. 100%. The other one that comes to mind is when you're, when you're on defense and you're, down, and you're up three and they have the ball and you have a foul to give. Do you foul them or do you risk that being in the, in the uh, act of shooting foul? That's another thing that's always a tough, tricky coach situation. I know Larry Brown years ago when the Pistons played the Lakers in game two of the finals got burned for not fouling Kobe and he sent the game to overtime. They won game two. Fortunately for Detroit, they ended up winning that series. But it's another one for you guys as coaches. It's always tricky. True. You absolutely foul. Absolutely. Because <laughs> we – Teams I've coached have lost two games by not fouling. Oh, really? And, and, a, and a, a kid made a three-pointer at half court. Oh, no. You know, just 
screw it up. And, it, and uh, I, I just think you foul. See, Ed, you should have fouled yeah. AJ. You should have fouled Ashley James last year in the scope. You should have done it instead of letting him at a half court shot. Yeah, he took that shot from 52 feet out. I should have fouled him at, at, at 54 feet. <laughs> But let's uh, move on to uh, this coming year for the uh, basketball scene here, Larry. I mean, uh, goodness, it's been a really strange year here in 2020. Um, I, I mentioned this to someone the other day about you know excitement. It's hard to get super excited and giddy when you're dealing with this pandemic. Nonetheless, I imagine your your kids have to be upbeat with this decision and kind of take us through what's what's the uh, process here for you all at the private school level. Well, we've been fortunate that we've been able to get in the gym a couple of days a week for the uh, uh, the last uh, maybe six weeks, maybe a month. Uh, so that's – and the kids are just excited. I mean, they want to go five days a week, I, I, absolutely. But uh, we've been able to get in, and the, and the kids are excited and hearing the news about, uh, you know, being able to play this year. And we, I, I'm pretty sure that the uh, VISAA will piggyback on uh, what the VHSL has done and probably go the same way with the no-jump ball and – you know, things like that. But it, it's really not a whole lot of changes. Uh, I can live without the jump ball. We're small anyway. So, um, But uh, just being in the gym with the kids, it's, it's been great. Uh, they, they're, it's, it's been tough on them not being able to be around their friends and be able to play the sport that they love. And, you know, we missed Future League. We missed Summer League. We missed going to team camp. Uh you know, we missed our workouts over the summer. Uh, so it's been tough because uh, we've got kids who who are year-round basketball players. We've got a lot of them. Uh, and uh, it's been really tough on them. You know, Larry, I, I, you personally, how did you deal with it? I, I know it was a struggle for me uh, throughout it. And, and what you just said brought back why it was because we, we're creatures of habit as coaches. This is what we do for Future League. Summer league workouts, boom, boom, boom. Here we go, fall league, and none of the, none of the, that was all gone. How did you personally right. handle it? <laughs> well, I kept in touch with our players for one thing, and made sure that they were doing something to keep in shape. And you know how kids are—they're going to go to the outdoor court and play uh, with you know. So our girls do that. I mean, they've they've gone out and worked out on their own. Uh, for me, you know, I had to stay away, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, just keeping in touch with them and, you know, letting them know that what the future wasn't bleak and this was going to end soon. And, you know, I told them we'll have a season next year. Don't worry about it. And, and they all hung in there pretty well. And, uh, and, and really, when they came in, uh, you could tell that they'd been playing some basketball because they, uh, you know, it wasn't like they hadn't picked up a ball since our last game. They'd been working out on their own and, you know, going to rec centers or whenever, wherever they could, basically outdoor courts, I guess, and uh, and getting the work in. So uh, we we've got some players that were first team all conference last year that are so much better right now, just from the work that they put in themselves. So uh, I, I look for I'm I'm just hoping for a season because I think we're going to be pretty good. Well, you know, Larry, that was going to be my next question. Um, two things. Let, what year are you going into? And I know it's early, early, but maybe some of your top returnees who we who can be look out and any of those girls getting the possibility to play next level. Yeah, well, we've got uh, you know we've got two returning all conference players, uh, Jora Epley, who's uh, you know grown about two or three inches, and she's a point guard, so she's she's five nine, almost five ten. Uh, definitely can play on the next level. Uh, just a junior. And, uh, you know, she's, she's being looked at right now. Uh, also Taylor Etheridge, who was a freshman last year, uh, another first team all conference player, uh, just has improved her game. She's changed her shot a little bit. Uh, both of them averaged about 15 points a game last year. And, uh, I look for great things out of both of them. And then, you know, we've got a transfer that came in, Kate Carlson, who was all Tidewater player last year. And uh, she, she's got a chance to be one of the best players I ever coached. Uh, she's, uh, you know, with her and Taylor and Jora, that threesome of, uh, of guards is uh, probably as good as any three guards I've ever had. So 
And then we've got great, you know, we've got Bella Woods and we've got Lexa Hunter who, you know, fill that four or five spot for us. And, you know, they both, we lost three starters from last year, but they both played a lot of minutes last year. They're both very good basketball players. And then we got a freshman that came in uh, from St. Matthew's, uh, uh, six foot post player, Grace Vaughn, uh, who has, you know, I know that word potential gets thrown around a lot, but she's got unlimited potential and she's the kind of kid that's going to just work at it and get better. So I'm looking forward to the season. I really am. I think we're going to be, uh, we, we have a chance, you know, whether we can win a state tournament, I don't know. Cause there's always Paul, the six lurking up there in uh, Northern Virginia, but I think we're going to be, you know, competitive. That's for sure. Well, Coach, thank you so much for giving us some time this morning. We wish you and your basketball squad all the best. Congrats again to your Dodgers, and uh, happy ha- have a happy Halloween, all right? All right, happy Halloween to you guys, and uh, I will talk to you down the road. Hey, Larry, candy candy of choice? Uh, Snickers. Okay, make sure to, uh, when, when Larry comes tonight, <laughs> trick or treating people, and he'll have his costume on, give him some Snickers. I actually got one more for you, Larry, too. Uh, we always ask you around Christmas time when we usually have you on the show, whether it's me or Ed or me and Lynn Burke, whoever, we ask you about Christmas movie. You got a favorite? Do you, do you have a Halloween movie? Is there a Halloween movie that's, that's up there that you would recommend, or you can't think of one? I would say just the original Halloween. You okay. Know? Uh, that one always stuck with me pretty good. I got Charlie Brown pumpkin. Jamie, page. Jamie Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis when she was uh, young and beautiful. Not bad, not bad. Have a good one, Larry. Thank you so much. Uh, all right, thanks, I'll Larry. See you guys soon. That Bye. is the one and only Larry Bowman with us here on Seven Five Seven Saturday Sports Talk, the Snickers guy, right here on the program. When we come back, it's week number eight in the league where they play for pay. It's going to be time for the picks. Yours truly, Ed and Dino, right here on ESPN Radio ninety four point one.